Hi, North End. Um, I just wanted to share something that the Lord's been reminding me of. He was really teaching me probably um, for the last several years, honestly. Uh, and this season has just kind of reminded me of the lessons I've learned and kind of solidified them, if that makes sense. Um, and that's about emotions. Um, so when I was younger, um, I'm not I'm not really an overly emotional person, but everybody has emotions and that's that's how God created us to, to feel like we have feelings and feelings matter and, and have meaning and have input into our lives and how we perceive things and how we interact. And so honestly, there was a stage where I really just tried to kind of ignore any feelings, tried to not let feelings, you know, like they, they were just kind of like, they, I almost thought of them as negative. Um, and something that a Christian shouldn't have. A Christian shouldn't have feelings, which is not biblical. Um, when you read in the Bible, you see all sorts of emotions. Um, you see godly responses to the emotions that we experience, and you see ungodly responses to the emotions that we experience. And you see Jesus experiencing emotions. Um, and I finally had somebody just really kind of speak some wisdom into that. Plus, I, I discovered that I, I couldn't completely get rid of my feelings, so that also helped. Um, but as I just really began to pray and the Lord began to work in my life, here are some things that I that I think are meaningful for us, uh, because I don't know if you're like me, but um, I have gone through a whole variety of emotions through all of this, which is honestly unusual for me because I'm usually pretty, pretty you know, state steady person emotionally, and so um, there's been a lot of emotions, and I, I foresee that you know, as we as we re-enter um, various places and as we kind of change again um, what the plan is there I expect to see more emotions um, for all of us uh, plus emotions are just like I said they're part of how God created us so um, first off I want to remind you that Jesus told his disciples to watch and pray lest temptation come and you know I think that that's an important thing I think we need to be aware and on the lookout like we're going to experience emotions and we need to be willing to identify them and name them um, because I think that when we shove them off or when we pretend like that emotions aren't in play, that I think that that becomes, that becomes a negative thing. So we need to watch and pray. We need to ask the Lord to show us, you know, hey, when am I reacting emotionally? It could be something that, you know, maybe I'm emotional over something that happened at work and I come home and I blow up because I'm still stressed out and I bottled all that stress at work up. And then I'm going to blow up at my family. Or maybe, you know, it's one of those things that there's been many little things that have been annoying me that I haven't addressed like I should have. And then all of a sudden that little petty thing happens and I just explode or, you know, start crying because it's just, you know, the emotions has built up on the day and I'm just, you know, a hot mess. Um, or maybe even, you know, there's all sorts of emotions and we need to be careful and we need to name them. We're so good at naming the positive emotions or what we think of as positive. Oh, I feel happy or I feel joy or I feel very content. But a lot of times we try to, you know, kind of avoid those more, what we think of as negative emotions, but um, they're part of how God created us. So watch and pray and, and ask the Lord, you know, where, where am I emotionally in this moment? And what are you doing through my emotions? What are you teaching me through my emotions? But um, James 4, 8 says this. It says, when we get to it, go. James 4, 8 says this. It says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Um, but I think, you know, that first part, I think it is draw near to the Lord. So let me challenge you as you navigate your emotions, draw near to the Lord. Um, when emotions hit, again, whether they're, you know, huge excitement and you're trying to figure out how to deal with all of your excitement over something, or maybe it's sorrow, or maybe it's um, frustrations, or maybe it's stress, or maybe it's... Um, you're uh, thinking forward but in a positive way and you're just feeling a lot of anticipation you know how are you dealing with those moments of emotions draw near to the lord like seek the lord in the moment of those emotions but i think you also need to remind yourself of what philippians says um philippians
Philippians 4, 8, and 9 says this. I forgot to put my marker in my Bible. Here we go. Um, Philippians 4, 8, and 9 says, Finally, brothers, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good report, if there is any virtue, if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. Um, and I think that that's so important for us, especially when we hit these moments where we're experiencing big emotions. I think it's so important that we go back to the these and we meditate on the things of God. Um, so let me challenge you, if you're having a moment where you are frustrated and angry and stressed or you know, you're really struggling with how do I handle all of these emotions in a godly manner, um, or maybe you're really excited about something and somebody else isn't <laughs> and you're like, you're moving from I'm really excited to now I'm really frustrated because I don't get why you're not so excited. Um, pause and turn your mind towards the Lord. Um, one of the tricks that I do, um, well, I hate to call it a trick, but one of the things I, I've learned is if I am experiencing a lot of stress and I'm feeling overwhelmed and I'm feeling like that stress is overtaking me and I can't cope, I will turn on praise and worship music. Because as, I, as that music of worship just begins to enter my mind, I'm able to turn my mind to whatever is pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever is good report, whatever is virtue. Like I'm able to turn my mind towards that. Um, I'll never forget the first time I got a speeding ticket. Um, I definitely put a Chris Tomlin song on repeat and my roommates that were in the car with me had to listen to that for like the next two hours as I tried to deal with the emotion, like I was devastated, you know, I was a college student, I'd gotten my first speeding ticket. Um, <laughs> and I was trying to cope with all of the emotions. I was stressed and I was sad and I didn't know I was gonna pay for it. I was gonna have to tell my parents. And so they got to listen, um, they got to listen to some praise and worship music. And I'll never forget just kind of that drive home um, as I just like cried and like slowly the words, of the song just really began to resonate that the Lord was in control and that he understood and that, you know that he was going to take care and provide for me um, and those truths were what I needed to do um, it's also a great moment you know pull up scripture verses have scripture verses that you can pull out whenever you're experiencing these emotions um, you know the kids at camp laugh at me because whenever I get irritated um, I, I will mutter the fruits of the spirit under my breath um, as a way to remind myself that, you know, that this is what the Spirit, that I need to be controlled by the Spirit of the Lord, um, not by my emotions. Um, at this point, I really want to remind you, the Lord got angry. God gets angry. So anger is not a negative thing. It becomes negative when we are not using that anger in a God-glorifying matter. And sometimes it becomes a sin when we had no rights to be angry anyway. I think a lot of times we get angry over the wrong things. We don't get angry over sin. We get angry whenever we feel like our rights are infringed upon. Um, but then last and not least, I want to turn you towards um, Psalms 34, 14. It says, depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Um, you know what emotions tend to overtake you. Um, you know what emotions you let take reign. Um, so today and the days going forward, I want to challenge you, seek peace and do good. Look for ways to let the Lord work in the midst of your emotions. Are you a person that struggles with anger? Let the Lord take rule over that. Are you a person that struggles with letting stress rule your life? Let the Lord take rule over that. Are you a person that lets, honestly, I think sometimes people can be they try to be over happy. Um, let the Lord take rule over that because there is a time to rejoice and there is a time to mourn. Um, we have all of these emotions that the Lord has given us to express what he is doing in our life. But we must always folk, focus on him and not those emotions. Those emotions are kind of a, um, they're like the waves in a sea, all right? And we like all of the things that the sea does. It's fun. It's fun when the sea is calm to look out. It's almost glassy. 
Uh, but it's also kind of neat to watch a storm roll in, or at least I think it is, from a safe space. I don't wanna be out there when there's a storm, but it's neat to watch the, the mighty waves. And you know, honestly, it's kind of fun to watch the lightning to me. Um, just flash across the sky and you really get a sense of God's power where our emotions are the same way. Those emotions are telling us what's going on in us, but we can't let them take 